Hi guys, I'm Laura and today I'm sitting on a bouncy ball because I couldn't find the thing I usually sit on. Um, I think it's in a different room so I just went to the desk and picked out the bouncy ball. I try to keep the bouncing to a minimum because I know it can be annoying I think um, but yeah just uh, don't be confused when I start wobbling. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to film this video yesterday but there was a lot of construction going on downstairs so there is I think they're splitting one flat into two and are building a new staircase and stuff like that so it was really loud and I couldn't I didn't want to do it so it's uh, Tuesday and I wanted to do something else today but I will be doing this now um, yeah, so today I want to talk about Sandal Sense, which I read a few weeks back. No, no, maybe one week, two weeks. Um, and I said that I wanted to do a review for it because I had some thoughts. Um, yes, and I will do that now. So let's start with the synopsis first. Uh, Sandal Sense is a fantasy novel by Josiah Bancroft. It's about a headmaster from a small school in a very remote uh, village and he and his new wife, um, they travel to the Tower of Babel um, to go on their honeymoon. And uh, before they can even get into the tower, his wife, uh, so his, the character's name is Sandlin, and his wife, he, she, she gets lost. So uh, he waits for her and then he remembers that um, they talked about meeting up somewhere in the tower. So he decides to climb the tower to meet her in the place they talked about before. Um, and uh, so this tower, it's not just like a regular tower, it's its really huge, so it consists of many different ringdoms. A ringdom is like a, a floor <laughs> with this, which essentially is its own kingdom, that's why it co it's called a ringdom. And um, those ringdoms, they are like, I don't know, 100 meters high, so it's not just like a single floor in a building, but a very huge place in itself and um, so he starts climbing the tower to meet his wife in the I think third ringdom or something and um, things happen so um, what I really liked about the book and what was the main reason why I got it is the world building I really liked the idea of that tower being this huge ominous Thing where people want to go to improve on their lives or do stuff um, and I think that was really well done so all those ringdoms um, they felt really differently uh, so for example the first ringdom which isn't really a spoiler because it's in the first 5200 pages um, there is like those beer fountains and Oh, that was weird <laughs> but it was also very cool um, and then the second ringdom is about acting and actors which I, I think I like that one uh, the most so um, but those ringdoms they all feel very differently and I think that's the biggest strength of this novel and I assume of the series so because I haven't read on in the series um, that they have all those different places in just one place which is really cool to be honest um, and yeah I'm a sucker for world building so I really liked exploring places that were quite different from one another and also very weird at times because I also like weird places um, yes and that's why this is the biggest plus for this book <laughs> Now let's get to the things I did not like that much. And just to bear in mind, I think I've got um, more negative points than I've got positive points. Uh, but um, the world building is a very huge plus. So um, yes, um, but what I didn't like was that those places, which were really cool in concept, or weren't really explored in a way that I would have liked. So 
uh, at a certain point they go to a new ringdom or Sandlin does and it just we get a we get a glimpse into this place and then um we stay in one place in this ringdom for the whole time and I wish that the author had done more to show us more of the, the ringdom they were in. And that was really, yeah, that was really kind of um, disappointing for me because I was hoping for much more world building, much more exploring places that were kind of different and new. And um, I, I hope that the future books do that because I think this was also his debut novel. And I hope that this improves in the latter installments. Um, but yes, I just wished there had been more of that weird world and more exploring, more showing more differences and stuff like that. Um, but we didn't get that. And that was a bit disappointing. Um, yeah, the next point I have is characters. So it just isn't really a negative point. I thought the characters were okay. So there were quite a few that I liked. Um, there was one character where I was, oh, I hope they come back. I just wanted them to return and uh, to get to know them better and stuff. And uh, yeah, so um, some characters were okay, some I liked. And then there was Thomas Sandlin, the main character. He was a bit bland. So um, I think he's supposed to be written that way because he's, he's very naive. He comes from a nice place. And in this tower, people are generally... Um, very shitty people <laughs> so uh, he gets betrayed a lot he gets scammed and he always falls for that so he's a very kind and innocent soul and he just has to get used to this very rough place um, but at one point <laughs> we get a, like a short glimpse into what his wife has been up to all the time um, and I was like, oh, why, why couldn't we have followed the wife? Because she seems so much more resourceful and so much more intelligent. And she just seemed like a more interesting character overall. Um, but instead, we're stuck with the Sandlin guy um, who, uh, yeah, he wasn't really a bad character, but he just was the great character either. So, yeah. Um, and... The last point that kind of bugged me about this novel was that I think in the, the last third um, there was, was a very big plot convenience. It was like one of those moments when characters in books, they, they do stuff and then they fail at doing stuff. But in the end they're like, oh, that was my plan all along and now it's all coming together. and. I don't like that. So it wasn't really set up that great, I think. And I just felt kind of cheap, like a like a way for Sandlin to uh, move on without him putting any effort in it. It was just like, so, oh yeah, so that's your job now. Go on, do your job. And I have planned this all along. It's just, yeah, it just, I didn't like that. Um, but yeah, so the ending was kind of open-ended and I am very curious to see where this goes. So I will read on, so I will go on with the series because um, I enjoyed this book. <laughs> so it may sound like I didn't, but I really enjoyed this book. And I am curious to see where it goes. Um, yes, I wish there had been some things that had been done differently, but um, I didn't write the book. So I have no say in that. Um, but overall, it was a good start to a series that I'm really interested in. And I like the world building and I hope, hope, hope that we get more of that in the uh, next, I think there's two books and one is coming out this year, I guess, I think I remember right. I don't know. But um, yeah, I, I'm very interesting to see where it goes and I can recommend this novel because it was interesting. So if you like world building, I think you want to give this a try. If you're in it for great characters, I think you might want to give it a pass. Um, yeah, but I can overlook kind of meh characters if the world building is cool. <laughs> and yeah, there. so um, that concludes my review of Sun and Sense. I just wanted to do that because um, this is the kind of book that I want. Uh, great world building. Just give me that and I'm satisfied. And so I just wanted to talk about it a bit. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did not, I'm very sorry, um, but still I will thank you for staying till the end. And I hope I'll see you next time. Bye!